today I'm going to talk about uh, how to simulate Fermi Hubbard model on the Sycamore quantum chip. So uh, the Fermi Hubbard model has two uh, important pieces uh, in it. And the first is the hopping, uh, hopping term. And the second is uh, the interaction term. And uh, the competition between these terms makes Fermi Hubbard model very interesting uh, in many body physics. It is used to benchmark many numerical methods, and it is relatively easy to simulate on a quantum computer. To simulate uh, the hopping term, or AKA uh, the tunneling term, we use a gate decomposition, use the uh, square root i swap and the single qubit z rotations. So these are uh, similar to uh, the gate decomposition in the Hartree Fock experiment. And we also need to simulate the interaction term. To, in, to simulate that term, we use uh, the C phase gate. And because uh, in our hardware, we don't have uh, this tunability of this uh, C phase gate. So uh, again, we decompose it into two uh, square root i swap gate. So here I write uh, the F sim gate because uh, it is more uh, precisely describe uh, the, the gate in our uh, hardware. So the F sim gate is a combination of uh, the square root I swap gate and uh, a C phase gate. So this is uh, the hardware layout of the uh, Fermi Hubbard model. In the Fermi Hubbard model, we have two spin states, uh, the spin up state and the spin down state. So here the spin up states are mapped to uh, the orange uh, spin chain and the spin down states are mapped to the green spin chains. Uh, in the first plot A, we implement uh, the hopping term between uh, odd and even uh, sites in the Fermi Hubbard model. And uh, in, the, uh, in the second subplot B, we implement uh, the interaction terms between all odd uh, sites. And uh, uh, this is problematic because, uh, because of the zigzag uh, uh, layout we choose. It is not possible to implement the interaction between uh, the, all the even sides. So the way we uh, achieve that is we kind of swap uh, these even and all the sides. So in, uh, so in subplot C, we implement both uh, the hopping terms between, um, between even sites and other sites. And at the same time, we swap uh, these uh, fermionic sites so that in the last subplot, we can implement uh, the interaction terms between uh, the uh, other sites. So uh, choosing a flexible layout is very important because that allows us uh, to do certain error mitigation schemes that I'm going to talk about. And also uh, we need to pay attention to these idling qubits. For example, in subplot B, we have uh, all the uh, even sites that are, are idling and applying dynamic decoupling of these uh, even site qubits are very important uh, to, uh, to get rid of crosstalks and also uh, mitigate uh, T2 errors. So uh, here are some experimental results on the non-interacting case. So first we produce uh, two wave packets. Uh, one is left moving and the other is right moving wave packets in these two chains. And uh, uh, then we uh, evolve these uh, wave packets and uh, trauterization. And we can see that uh, uh, the wave packets bounce around uh, the, uh, the boundaries many times. And we can see this beautiful interference pattern even after uh, 60 trouter steps. So in this case, uh, the circuit depth is almost 500. So remember the circuit depth in quantum supremacy is 20. But uh, here we show with careful error mitigation and the calibration, you, go, you can go much deeper uh, circuits. So maybe you can do something with these uh, NISC devices. And uh, uh, in the right plot, you can see uh, these uh, wave packets, uh, they cross each other and uh, uh, then uh, they bounce the back. 
And if you see these error bars in this plot, that represents uh, the, uh, the distribution of uh, the results that we gain from um, 16 different uh, realizations of uh, the same circuit. So this is uh, very important for us to uh, observe this coherent uh, time evolution. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about the calibration and uh, the error mitigation schemes that we uh, have been using. And uh, uh, one important uh, ingredient in this experiment is we use uh, this fast calibration protocol that Hart would just talk about uh, to uh, mitigate drift errors. So uh, the native gate in our hardware can be described by uh, this a little bit generalized FSM gate. You can think of this gate as the FSM gate with some uh, single qubit faces, both uh, before and after it. <clears throat> and this gate has uh, five parameters. Out of these five parameters, four parameters are, are very important to our uh, experimental result. That one is theta, and these are the, the as you can see in the in the bottom plot, these are the calibration uh, results of the distributions of these uh, uh, these parameters while we are doing this experiment. Uh, theta is pretty good; it is narrow, distributed to the desired uh, values. But uh, these single qubit phases, delta and the gamma, they uh, have a very wide distribution due to the drift of the uh, qubit frequencies and maybe other control parameters. So with this new calibration tool, we are able to correct these uh, drift errors and uh, uh, make uh, the results much better. As you can see uh, on the left plot, we plot this uh, drift corrected case and uh, uh, the uncorrected compared with the uncorrected case. So in the drift correct case, we observe uh, the center of mass motion of uh, this left moving and the right moving wave packets. And we compare it with the exact result. As you can see, it, uh, the result captures uh, the, the both nodes of this left moving and the right moving wave packets correctly. Whereas in the uncorrected case, it doesn't uh, catch uh, this node correctly for a larger circuit depth. And we're working on a, a calibration API that uh, you guys can also use it on the, uh, on the quantum engine. And so uh, to get the desired result, uh, have to uh, uh, align these two qubit gates correctly. And, uh, uh, and for each different configurations of two qubit gates, you calibrate it uh, uh, independently to uh, mitigate crosstalks. And uh, we've, we've used uh, uh, some error mitigation schemes to get uh, the performance uh, to the desired level. Uh, so one of the error mitigation scheme we use is circuit averaging, which removes biases due to the inhomogeneity in the system. So in the uh, right plot, you can see uh, we arrange the qubit sets differently. Also, we choose different sets of qubits uh, on the uh, GMON23 uh, chip to, uh, to make it happen. Uh, on the left plot, uh, I plot another error mitigation scheme that we use, which we call it linear rescaling. So linear rescaling uh, is it's very important as you can see in this comparison. On the left plot, we use uh, linear rescaling for uh, the center of mass motion. So uh, it can, um, or it can go all the way to, uh, to 60 charter steps. Whereas on the right-hand side, if we don't use this linear rescaling, then uh, the errors are much, uh, are much smaller. Uh, so the errors are much larger compared to uh, the left plot. So this is very uh, similar to uh, the case of, of the GPS, whereas you use the reference uh, state to keep track of the errors. So with all of these error mitigation scheme and the calibration scheme, we were able to observe a very a famous uh, phenomenon in one deformed Hubble model called a uh, spin charge separation. So we uh, prepare wave packets in the middle and we see the different uh, spreading speed 
of uh, both the spin and the charge degrees of freedom. So with that, uh, I want to uh, thank your attention and, uh, and I'll hand it back to uh, Marisa.